A nurse is someone who's expected to take care of you. You trust them in good faith that they'll bring you back to life, nurse you back to normal condition if you're sick. The nurse is the last person that you expect to harm you, or in simpler terms, kill you. I'm at the bridge, and in tonight's installment, we'll be talking about five nurses notorious for killing their patients, some past, some recent. Serial killers come in all kinds of flavors. They pick their victims and their methods of killing, and they come from many different backgrounds. After all, it's estimated that psychopaths make up about 1% of the population. Perhaps Jane Toppin, born Honor Kelly, the latter of which being the better name, was a psychopath. Born in 1857, Jane's life was what you could describe as being a difficult life. Her parents were Irish immigrants, and her mother died of tuberculosis when she was very young. Her father was an alcoholic named Peter Kelly. He was known in his community for being an eccentric. Two years after the death of Jane's mother, Peter took his two eldest daughters to the Boston Female Asylum, which was an orphanage for poor and needy women. After residing at the orphanage for some time, in 1864, November, Honora was then placed in the home of Mrs. Ann C. Toppin in Lowell, Massachusetts as an indentured servant. Honora then adopted the name Jane and took the last name Toppin. The Toppin family didn't actually adopt her as they had already had an eldest daughter. After some time, Jane started training as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. She was seen by the residents and the people she worked with as a friendly person. When Jane started getting closer to the patients, as in she would start being closer in proximity to them, she would choose her favorites. She would then find times where she could be alone with these patients and experiment using drugs on them. Her favorites were usually the old and the sick. After all, if they were to pass, no one would really expect anything. She experimented on them using the drugs morphine and atrophine. After working in the Massachusetts General Hospital in 1889, she claimed a few victims. She was fired and then she returned to Cambridge where she was dismissed for improperly administering drugs. After being dismissed as a nurse at Cambridge, she started her own private practice, which means she would go out into the public and provide her services for families. And this is where the fun really begins. In 1895, she started off by killing her landlords. And then later, she would kill the daughter belonging to the Toppin family. In 1901, Jane moved in with the Alden Davis family to take care of him after his wife's death. Within two weeks, his daughters were deceased. Jane then moved back to her hometown to court her foster sister's husband. She started off by killing his sister and then poisoning him in an attempt to prove herself as a nurse. Luckily, he was not as unintelligent as it would seem and kicked her out. In 1901, Jane was arrested for murder. A surviving member of the Davis family called for a toxicology report of one of the oldest daughters and when they were removed, obviously it came back that they were poisoned. And who took care of them? Jane. And that was pretty much it. One year later, Jane confessed to 31 murders and was placed in Taunton Insane Hospital, where she was found not guilty by reason of insanity and she would die there in the year 1938 after spending the rest of her life there. Germany is a country for known for its innovation, among other things. Not much backstory exists, but recently, in August 2017, or somewhere around that time, a nurse in Germany was discovered to have killed at least 90 patients in his care. It was probably more, but all those people have been cremated 
were buried already, so the numbers can never be known. So it surprises me that Niels was dubbed Germany's worst serial killer by Bild, a publication in the country of Germany. The serial killer seemingly embarrassed in public photos in public places started his spree in 2000. You see, Niels got away with so much murder because his method was such that he would administer a drug to cause a medical emergency. In the ICU, he would finish killing them. Or perhaps he wasn't actually trying to kill them. During his time at that hospital, the fatality rate went up from 5% to 10% in the ICU. He used various different drugs to achieve the deaths of his patients. In 2005, he was reportedly seen injecting a patient with some drugs, and nothing was thought of it. The person reported it to management, and nothing was done. The next day, the person died. So a life could have been saved there, but due to negligence, nothing happened. In the year 2008, Hogel was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison for attempted murder, but not as all as it seems. You see, a woman closely following Neil's case in the media had suspicions that Neil's was the cause of her mother's death. In 2015, Neil's was once again brought to court, where he confessed to administering 90 unauthorized injections, 30 of which caused the death of those patients. Hogel was then sentenced to life in prison. What's interesting to note about this is that we can never know how many he actually killed, which is quite disturbing. In our previous entries, we saw nurses that killed the old and the sick, and even caused incidents to get them alone, to kill them. As disturbing as Niels Hogan and Jane Toppin were, I doubt they can actually top this individual. Beverly Allett was a nurse in the UK committing her killings during the span of 59 days, mostly on infants. Over that two month time frame in 1991, Beverly claimed 13 victims and four deaths. All of her victims ranged from less than one year to one five year old and an 11 year old. The four children were Liam Taylor, seven weeks, Timothy Hardwick, 11 years old, Becky Phillips, two months old, and Claire Peck, 15 months old. Beverly would inject these children with insulin doses, which would cause an overdose, potentially leading to death. You see, it's not quite that simple to kill someone with insulin. She was caught after the death of Claire Peck due to staff becoming suspicious of the number of cardiac arrests occurring in the children's ward. Police were called and they discovered that Beverly was the only nurse on duty and she was the only one who had access to the drugs during those hours. Beverly Allett was sentenced to 13 concurrent life terms with a recommendation to serve a minimum of 30 years, only if she was deemed safe for society. Beverly is being held in the Rampton Secure Hospital. And I hope she never gets out. Janine Jones is a suspected serial killer responsible for at least two deaths and perhaps up to 60 infants in her care during the years of 1977 to 1982. As we've seen in previous entries, this nurse, Janine, would administer drugs to cause a crisis in the infants. This crisis would sometimes kill them. Before her days as a nurse, Janine worked as a beautician before attending nursing school in the late 1970s. She worked at the pediatric intensive care unit at what is now the University Hospital of San Antonio. The drug used causes a temporary paralysis of all skeletal muscles and that even means the muscles used to breathe. So the patients would probably suffocate. In infants, the drug would cause cardiac arrest, leading to their death. 
In the year 1985, Janine Jones was sentenced to 99 years in prison for the killings of Chelsea McLellan, who was only 15 months old, and later was sentenced concurrently to a 60-year term for the attempted murder of Rolando Santos. In 2018, Janine is due for a mandatory release due to a Texas law designed to prevent overpopulation of the prisons. But Janine can still be charged for the crimes, after all. In 2017, she was indicted for the murder of 11-month-old Joshua Sawyer. So, as of now, it would appear that she's never getting out. Janine is currently 67 years old. For the most part, the nurses listed on this list were all as unassuming. After all, the nurses, and they generally blend into society very well. Elizabeth Whitlofer, her life was seemingly normal. She'd go to her job, perform her duties, she'd go home, play her video games, and then retire for the evening. Surprisingly, she had a dark side, and she didn't actually quite try to keep this under wraps at all. See, she suffered from a drug addiction of which she went to rehab for twice. She worked at a retirement home called Crescent Care and she was fired after accidentally administering the wrong drugs to a patient. She then began working at Meadow Park Nursing Home. Nobody at all was even aware that Elizabeth was even killing her patients. And it came to a surprise to many and her coworkers alike after all. They described her as being good with the patients and being a good nurse. All of her victims were aged 75 to 96, so it does not leave the question why she got away with killing these patients. Her method, as we've seen previously, was to administer a dose of insulin in her patients, causing them to overdose on the drug. Out of the 14 attempts to kill, Eight of them were successful. Elizabeth, in an interview with police, seemed rather cordial. She described that she would be filled with an urge to kill that was like a red surge of pressure in her chest, something that only went away when she would inject her patients with insulin. She told the detective who was interviewing her that she thought that this was something that God told her to do. People might have in their mind homicidal nurses who go through great lengths to ensure that they don't get caught. But Elizabeth was not that. She confessed during her nine years murdering patients that she came forward to a friend, a pastor, and even a lawyer who she claimed had told her to keep it to herself, and even a support group that she went to for her drug addiction. It was only taken seriously during her second time in rehabilitation. She told some of the people there and then they took the steps necessary to report the proper authorities. Wetlawfer was sentenced to eight concurrent life terms in prison with no possibility of parole for 25 years. You'd think that something like this is an isolated case, but you'd be surprised how many nurses, doctors, and the like who kill their patients get away with it. After all, if someone's sick or old, were injured in some weird roundabout way, it's easy to make something look like an accident. These kind of serial killers can be classified as angels of mercy, or as some people call them, angels of death. These people employed as caregivers obviously intentionally kill patients under their care, sometimes in an act of mercy because they think that they would relieve the patient's suffering, sometimes in an attempt to nurse them back to life, and when taken to an extreme, simply just to kill them, because they think that life is something to be played with. So, after all, should you trust your nurse? I don't think so. After all, you have no one else to trust. So, what did you think? <clears throat> If you liked the video, leave a like. If you have something you'd like to add to the conversation, or perhaps a suggestion, leave a comment below. 
Subscribe to see more content because more content is definitely coming. Follow me on Twitter and like my Facebook page to connect with me. Till next time, I'm at the bridge. Thanks for watching. Care to plenty.